Is it faster? Yes. Is it better? I don't know. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, there's some nuances that you'll need to know about. Let's talk about that. All right, guys, we're going to do a install of the Ubiquiti U7 Pro. It's a brand new uh, access point out by Ubiquiti. We're going to see how it performs. All right, we're back after doing the full installation. Have you guys noticed any difference with the speed on the internet? No. No. No? It's about the same? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so too. All right, girls, did you guys see any difference on the, the Wi-Fi when we went to Wi-Fi 7 from Wi-Fi 6? No. No, I didn't really either. And that includes us going from 1 gig internet to 2 gig internet. I'll explain in a second how you're really going to get that increase in, uh, in speed on your devices. Note that there are only a few devices out there right now that really support Wi-Fi 7, so we might have to wait a little bit before we really see a benefit for end users. I'm going to start by showing you the main interface of my Ubiquiti system here. Um, just keep in mind that I won't go into a lot of details regarding the adoption of these uh, U7 Pro devices. There's plenty of good videos out there uh, that show that process uh, when they were announced there at CES 2024. So I'm just going to show you some settings that I don't think were called out very well uh, that do impact how you do your configuration. So we'll start here with the wireless configuration. And uh, you'll see here I had to create a, a separate Wi-Fi SSID just for the 6 gigahertz uh, frequencies because it requires a WPA3. And so if you enable the Wi-Fi 6, I'm sorry, the Wi-Fi 7 with the 6 gigahertz band, you're going to require, uh, it's going to require the WPA3. So there's a lot of uh, older devices, uh, Google Nest, uh, TVs, things like that, that will not work with WPA3. Um, so what I had to do was go back into the Wi-Fi configuration, uh, create a new network that, or use the old network, I should say, without the 6 gigahertz uh, band, and then you can utilize your old WPA2 so your old devices can still connect. All right, and back at the dashboard, you can see that we can manage the individual uh, access points. I've got three here on the network. Uh, this one here in my office uh, shows that it's got a pretty good connection from all the devices attached, but I've had to do some work to make that work properly. Um, if you go into settings, you can see that you can control the the channel width on each of the frequencies, in this case 2.4 uh, is at 20, 5 gigahertz is at 80, and the 6 gigahertz is at 160. Now, I could probably push this to 320 just to try it out. I don't have any interference obviously on the 620, or, I'm sorry, on the 6 gigahertz band at this time. It's, you can ind individually control the minimum RSSI, which determines uh, when devices will be forced off of that AP onto another one. Uh, based on their signal strengths, so you can change the slider here to indicate minimum signal strength, which is pretty cool. I didn't have to do it on this particular access point, but um, you can if you need to. If you see devices are hanging on longer than they probably should. All right, so I've tried to get an appearance from all the kids in these videos and say hello to Bailey, and she's going to make an exit. We'll finish this video up. Bye. For those of you that are wondering, you do get um, all the bands included um, when you go to the U7 Pro. So you'll have your uh, 5 gigahertz, your 6 gigahertz, but you also still get your 2.4 gigahertz, which uh, has a much better coverage. Um, not as good on the speed, but when you need uh, a little bit of internet outside around your house or uh, in your backyard, 
this is where it's probably going to come from. These other frequencies probably aren't going to make it out past the walls and uh, into the outside areas as well. Um, but while you're inside the house, if you've got good proximity to this, this access point, you're going to get some good throughput with these settings. Let's take a quick look at the settings we're using on this uh, configuration with the Wi-Fi 7 using the U7 Pro that's uh, actually making it work. On the Wi-Fi settings, you need to make sure um, that your uh, Wi-Fi band 6 GHz is enabled if this is the 6 GHz SSID. Uh, also, you need to come down here and look at the fast roaming options. Uh, when the fast roaming was turned on, I had issues with devices connecting to 6 GHz. So I'm going to disable that, apply those changes, and as we go back, uh, it'll reboot the, um, the devices, reinitiate the, the SSID, and once we do that, you may see more devices show up on the 6 GHz band. After changing the settings for the SSID to disable the fast roaming, uh, you'll see that the devices, once they reconnected, uh, that are compatible with uh, Wi-Fi 6E or 7 are now connecting to the 6 gigahertz frequency or band. Um, I don't know why that does that. It, I can't find any documentation uh, supporting uh, the correlation between the fast roaming and the 6 gigahertz band, but I'm sure it has to do with the maturity of the, of the technology. I'm sure we'll see firmware updates that address this. Um, but I, I just want to call out that I've disabled all of the roaming, the roaming options uh, on the Wi-Fi settings for the SSID that I'm using for the 6 gigahertz band, the Wi-Fi 7 specific SSID. So we don't have any of the fast roaming or the, uh, was it the BSS transition. Also has to do with roaming between access points. I've disabled all those options just to enable that we're getting the the best performance from that 6 gigahertz band. Here I have a uh, Ubiquiti Dream Machine SE. Now the SE is a little bit uh, more expensive than the regular Dream Machine Pro because it's got two uh, re uh, PoE Plus ports and then the rest of the ports are standard PoE. These access points require PoE Plus in order to operate properly. So I've got two of them attached to the PoE Plus and then I've got one with the PoE turned off and I had to order a PoE Plus injector for that third one. You're not going to get full speed uh, capabilities out of these devices in this configuration. The Dream Machine SE ports are only a gigabit port. The U7 Pros are great. They have high speed capabilities. Uh, I think I've seen videos where they're touting up to 2 gigabits per second transfer speeds. They're, they're pretty fast, or maybe more than that. Um, but you got to keep in mind that it's not just the access point that determines the actual speed. There's a lot of possible bottlenecks in your network. And in this case, I've got a Ubiquiti Dream Machine SE. As you can see here, it's a rack mounted device uh, with 8 gigabit. A PoE ports and a two SFP ports and one dedicated 2.5 gigabit port for internet. I do have 2 gig internet from AT&T Fiber and I've got a Verizon uh, wireless internet as backup as you can see there in port 10. So I've got one leftover port, uh, that's port 11. And that's going to come into play here when uh, we think about the fact that these 2.5 gigabit uh, ports that are on the U7 Pros are only connected to a single gigabit port on the SE device. So what we've got to do to achieve full speed is hook up each U7 Pro with CAT6, which would give us up to 10 gigabit, and then connect those CAT6 cables to a device that actually supports 2.5 gigabits or higher. So Ubiquiti has a uh, switch that will support that speed, and then you'll have to use an SFP uplink to this uh, router device in order to get your full capability from each of those U7 Pros. So you're talking another $400 plus, uh, plus the, the uplink cable, which I think is about 15 bucks from Ubiquiti. 
So the additional cost that we're going to need to think about um, in this environment will be a new switch, which I think is going to be a 16 port PoE plus switch. It has to be PoE plus. It has to be 2.5 gigabit or higher ports on it to support the full throughput of each of these access points. And it also has to contain an SFP uplink of 10 gig um, so that you don't have a bottleneck between the switch and the dream machine. Um, so uh, $400 plus or 400 plus dollars plus the price of your uplink to the dream machine. Uh, and it's just a, an additional cost that uh, you need to think about when designing your network. All right, I just wanted to finalize my thoughts on the U7 Pro. I think it's a very robust device. It's got a lot of maturing to do in terms of the firmware, in my opinion. Um, and I don't know if there are limitations of the standard or if it's just uh, how new these uh, devices are and the technology. But um, in terms of bandwidth steering and things of that nature, there's no options in the Ubiquiti software right now for uh, the 6 gigahertz band. So we have to just turn off the bandwidth steering at this time. Um, hopefully that is something that can be in a future firmware release. So we'll see. But I'm looking forward to, to what these uh, devices can do for us uh, in larger deployments as well. So it's, it'll be interesting to see where this goes. Um, but I want to thank you for for joining me. I, I really appreciate all the viewers out there. And if you uh, enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right, and Mr. Ed, what is the WEP? Wet. Wet? <laughs> and where's the where's the wet? <laughs> no. Where's the wet? No, that's the wet, not the wet. <laughs> no, the wet. Where's the wet? Where's the wet? Are you it's the in the wiffy? It's in the wiffy. <laughs>